Hello and welcome back. I'm John Thorne from Thorny Motorsport and you'll notice I'm sitting, sitting down with this video. And the reason why is it's quite long. If I can do it in one take, I'll be frankly amazed, but I'm going to try. But it's all about McLaren engines. Now, forget all the turbos and ancillaries. I'm talking just about the engine itself. I'm also not going to go about the details, what it is, where it comes from. You can Wikipedia the crap out of that to find all that out. All the information is out there. What I'm going to do in this video is detail the kind of things that can go wrong how they can go wrong and which models are affected. But also explaining why that information is actually quite hard to compartmentalize down to video. I've been brutally simple. I'm assuming you guys are rough at the engine does. So you've got a top end and a bottom end. Okay, so your bottom end is your pistons, your crank and all the bits. Your top end is your valves and your, your cams, etc. Generally speaking, all the McLaren engines, be it three liters or four liters, regardless of model, are relatively strong bottom end. They very rarely have problems with bottom ends. That's crank, pistons, and anything else that's there. Very rarely to be a problem with those ones. Save for one thing, uh, and that is um, liners, cylinder liners. Now, liners are, this is a liner, there you go, that's a liner. So liner sits down inside the bore of the bottom end, uh, and they're made from aluminium, and then also the piston, which I've got one here, goes up and down inside the liner. Okay, so it's up and down, that's what causes the car to generate power. This is a liner, and then so is this one. This is a shiny new one, and this is obviously a knackered old one. <clears throat> now, we've had a couple of cars now, and at the moment it's just been sports series cars, where they have had mapping done on them, and they have resulted in the liners being cracked, which is literally, it's very hard to see, and even when I do a close-up, the edge of the liner here has a small little crack, and what happens is that coolant and oil mixes, leaks, and it has the same sort of effect as like a head gasket going. You get a lot of pressure and you get a mixture of oil and, water, oil and uh, water together, which obviously is bad news for engines. The only way to fix it is to replace the liner. Okay, so this is my sports series engine. We've only seen this problem on mapped cars, never seen on a standard car, but with some investigation behind it, we have dug a lot deep into it, and a lot of it relates to the fact that McLaren as a manufacturer are a little bit different, shall we say, to most manufacturers. You need to think of McLaren as being like a cottage industry. Okay? They, they build cars, they build many of them, and they build them based on creating a product, very, very good. Then as a course of life goes, they will make changes to that product. They may or may not let us know about. Now, going back in the day when the 12C was first created, the liners were made by one manufacturer. I won't give a name, it doesn't seem to make any help. And those liners work fine. We've never seen a problem on 12C liners or 650 liners unless they're race cars or they were tuned. But then we've seen some issues now with later model cars and to be sports series cars where we have had cracked liners. Even the fairly mild tune that we would expect to be an issue. Now the reason why is that these are two different manufacturers of liners. The original manufacturer had a system, fantastic, one for work, great. But there were issues with it. Okay, there were issues with some of the the profiling on top of the liner. And during the course of production, that particular manufacturer changed the profile. That's again, it's hard for me to show this. The profile of how this liner is actually machined. And also the design of how it fits in with the block. And they did it all happy and green and everything else there, and everything went fine. Um, then at some point in time when the sports series had developed, the accountants got involved and they changed the supplier of the liners to another party. They had an engine, they were shown what was done, and they went back to McLaren and said, look, you've given us this engine, you've shown us these liners, it differs to the drawings that you made. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do the drawings or do you want to go to what we've got here? And McLaren said, don't know what they've done, go to the drawings. And what happened was the original manufacturer liners changed the drawings to make a liner a slightly different profile, which fixed the problem, but didn't charge you more for it, didn't change anything about it, told McLaren about it, but it's always done dusted. And many years later, this changes. When they change suppliers, a new supplier comes on board, goes to the drawing, which is generally speaking at fault, and we now get issues where we are cracking liners, especially on tuned cars. Okay? The fix to this is that we are now replacing aluminium liners with steel ones, okay? And we're using the original drawing design from the original manufacturer because that enables us to give a stronger engine and going further forward. But it does mean if you do have sort of symptoms of a uh, uh, head gasket failure, so you know, coolant mixing, water, misfires, that kind of stuff, it may well be a liner issue. Okay, only way to prevent this is that if you're going to tune a car, do it properly or don't tune a car at all. 
And again, keep an eye on your respective mixtures and looking after the car. But it's only really sports that has been affected so far. Okay, four litre, different supply entirely. So that's liners and that's bottom end. There are no other bottom end issues that we have seen with these cars that aren't either caused either by abuse or by just crap maintenance. Now we've got two, we've seen a couple of 675 engines, I've got another one in at the moment with a blown engine, where it is either not enough oil has been put in in the service, which was done, I won't say by who by, and that caused a failure of the block by putting a rod through it and punching a hole through it and destroying the engine. Or it is by over revving it. Now, again, over revving the actual rev limit on a 605 or see whatever it's going to be, is about 8,740 RPM, etc. There's no real point revving it beyond 8,000 because you're running out of power anyway. But <clears throat> if you do high rev it, you're going to get issue where you're going to have contact between the uh, valves and the piston round. And here's the top of the piston. Again, I'll show you. Nice little impact marks from a valve, not good. Um, and you're gonna cause engine damage. Um, and I've got one here now, exactly that. Now, on this one of the cars that we have here uh, is being mapped. And we suspect the rev limit has been raised as well, which is again a no-no, and again has caused, we think, this engine to fail. Now, I'm not gonna go into details here about it, that's somebody else's problem. But it's just pointing out that a bottom end failure, as in issues of bottom end, tends not to be a manufacturing fault. I'm sure they happen, but we haven't seen many of them. So rev limits and tuning are something to be careful of. Doesn't mean you don't do it, we do it here. We have lots of cars tuned, all great. Both of our cars have been running high power maps for years. All that issue, it's a question of quality. So bottom end though, generally is fine, okay? Other than that process behind it. But it's the top end, okay? It's the head, the heads part, so to say, which are causing the majority most issues. And nearly all of it is down to oil pressure issues, i.e. not enough. Now, we're doing a video coming up about we replaced an oil pressure relief valve on the bottom of the engine of a, of a 12 cylinder it was. Um, it's never been done before. Um, there was not even any record how to do it because no one's ever had a problem with it. had too much oil pressure in a McLaren engine. It's always been not enough. So we'll do a separate video of that because it's quite difficult to do. Um, but lack of oil pressure is what causes the problem. Now, part of it is down to design the engine about how the cans pick up oil. They actually throw it off rather than bring it in in their rotation. And also in fact, it's a dry sump engine. But you run these cars hard when they're cold or not with oil pressure, you generate problems. Now we've seen problems with rockers where, where they've been, some have been uh, coated and some haven't been coated, but they've worn and problem with the cams. And you get cam wear, you know, loads of the cam we've got here. Again, it's impossible to see it in the video, but you can see marks on the cam itself where it's worn. Um, and that has an ongoing process behind it. But the majority of problems at top end, again, oil related, are down to these little puppies here, okay? That's a cam phaser, all right? Now, this essentially is the most complicated thing known to man to do cam timing. Inside here is what's best described is a clutch mechanism. And it engaged its teeth to engage the, the, the teeth on the cam, do the cam timing on the engine. But it's all pressure related. The oil pressure must build up to engage that mechanism inside, which then engages the teeth, that then engages the cams. So if you don't have oil pressure, you've got a weakness in the system. And the weakness system is these little things, because there's no way I can repair this. Even the rip, we rip one open, you have to literally cut it in half to get it in there. And inside is basically a clutch, everything else is there, and it's simply to replace them, okay? Now we have had 40 items of these. We've put them into the car, uh, and they've gone wrong straight away. I've got one poor owner, it's on his third set now, it's very frustrating. And also the difference between the sports series and the super series, because the level of time when the cam moves out is different between the cam. Well, great fun, this. But these are the ones that are causing the problem. So these, um, where it starts to get excess wear on the, on the mechanism inside, the little clutch mechanism, it means that the cam literally goes out of profile. It moves out of alignment and you start to wear, you start getting the ticking noise, you start to get the wear, and you have to go to the process of replacing the phases. Okay? Every single time we've seen this, it has been down to a lack of oil pressure. Now you can either blame it on the owner, not topping it up, revving it's hard. You can blame it on the manufacturer saying, look, it should have been a better system, or it's just sheer damn bad luck. Okay, and any one of those things can be. And it can be under warranty, under warranty, and there's a different process behind it. But that is where you have the top end issue now. So really you've got, so that's it, just a summary of the way or not, I can keep up with it all. Bottom end, liners, no other issues. Top end, you've got cams, you've got rockers, you've got followers, and you've got specifically the um, phasers, which is the main thing you've got. Now what can go disastrously wrong is if you do get lower oil pressure and you do rev it a bit too hard, is it you'll break one of these. 
Now this is a valve spring, or rather I should say two valve springs, it should be one. That has snapped and resulted in a bent valve, there's one there, and that bent valve has then contacted the piston, bad news. Now, a, a top end and bottom end issue like this, this is, I won't start one of the cars that's here, but it, you have a very high pitch rattle right from the top end and a low pitch rattle right from the bottom end. It's horrible, it's expensive, yes we can fix it, a new engine on these things is 50 or thousand pounds now, but generally repair, worst case scenario, looking at half that, a bit less than. So it is doable. It's a hideous bill, horrible to have, but a lot better than a new engine. Generally speaking, so what you have is you have a combination of no oil pressure, or the car is cold, and revving it hard, worst case scenario, will do that. Okay? Best case, you're going to wear your cam phaser out, knack your cams and go from there. Worst case scenario, you end up buzzing the engine, dropping the valve, breaking the valve spring, contacting the piston, piston rings are gone as well, you're looking at £25,000 bill. Now, I don't mind you do that, it keeps me in business, but I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather you got your oil pressure up, warm the car properly and go from there. Okay? Now, generally speaking, I'm showing all these broken bits. Please don't take this as some kind of comment that the engines are shit. They are not, all right? They are wonderful engines. They're probably the, one of the best design engines I've ever seen. <clears throat> and they are fantastically engineered bits of kit. They have suffered from accountants getting a bit involved, shall we say, changing some of the rockers to a non-coated version, changing some of the phases to the supplier, changing the liners in supplier to save a few quid here and there. You know, that's manufacturing, okay? That's how it goes, I understand that. But every single problem I've detailed here, other than the bad luck one, can actually be fixed by simply warming it up and checking your level. That's it. Everything else is there. Okay? Sometimes a bit of bad luck, a bit of over revving, understand it, a bit too enthusiastic on track day, revving up some rev for your friends and running always cold. Just try and avoid it if you can. But you can avoid all those problems. Okay? The moment I've got half a dozen cars in for engine work, and without being unfair, it murders my workshop. Because an engine job is 20, 30 hours of the work plus engine building time. As a workshop, we can't cope with lots of dead cars everywhere. It's not great for us. We'd rather have cars come in and cars go out again. So this is almost like a warning message saying, please don't, don't damage your engine. Yes, we can fix it for half the cost of somebody else. But I rather really didn't, didn't damage it at all. All right, so I'm going to try and edit this video a bit so you can, I can go to each section about rings and everything else that's there and try and put some B-roll into it to show you the details. It's not easy on a picture like this. But I wanted to do a general engine process behind it to show what you've got. Now, final aspect of it, how do I know my engine has got a problem? What's the issue? Okay, um, if your bottom end's gone, you'll know. Trust me, it's a horrible clunking noise and will probably spit oil out the back of the car and a big cloud of white smoke and you're fucked either way. Okay, so that's, that's all it. But top end, what have you got? So if you have um, a very lumpy idle or a ticking noise type process when the car is stone cold, first of all, to undertake the cold start adaptations for the car, which means driving it, at 50 odd degrees, just over 30 miles out in a fifth gear, okay? And it resets the system. We've got a couple now that have been reported to us as having cam bases gone. We fix them just by setting the colds that are adaptations. I've done a video about it as well. Um, secondly, check your level once a week. You know, we own three McLarens, they're checked every time they drive, okay? I was out at the 720 last week, all checked. Came back, all checked. It's not hard, two minutes time at 720, it's a pain in the neck, frankly, but it's not as like you can a huge amount of time every day on a calling around car, okay? So please check your oil. Okay. Other problems in terms of phases and anything else that's there, if you get this little ticking noise and you get this cold start lumpy idle type process, it's worth investigating. It doesn't necessarily mean the cam phases are gone, but it is a possibility. You would also get normally, but not the whole time, an engine manager like simply says, engine, check engine report to the uh, McLaren dealer. So that's something to consider as well. In terms of a failure from a bent valve, again, you'll know about it. It will make a rattly noise that you'll hate passionately and you'll stop the car. Okay. If it's done, it's either been over revved or it's a combination of not the oil pressure and being revved too high, bent the valve, broke the spring, hit the contact the piston. Okay? Um, other than that, there's not really much you can do in terms of identifying what the engine problem is. The rings issue has been, has been misdiagnosed a few times with people doing head gaskets. Okay? We've noticed what? Eight years? We've never done a head gasket. Okay? Ever. It is not a failure item. Only things we've done that have the same symptoms are a line of failure. So bear that in mind as well. Um, all pumps, all pressure, everything else there. If you do have a lot of oil pressure from the pump related stuff, you'll get a separate code and a separate alarm. Okay, it won't give you a code in the car engine, it'll give you a code in the pump. Okay, so it's a good indication for that. Um, what else? It's a bit disjointed, but it's trying to hard to cover an entire engine in one little video and last less than 20 minutes, which is probably like 15 minutes. 
So that's pretty much it. Phasers are, are your biggest issue. Uh, it's a replaceable item. We've got them down to about four or five thousand pounds now to replace them all. So it's not exactly a bad job anymore. It used to be a place whole head at twenty odd grand, but it's changing now. Um, and in terms of the replacement versions of them, we haven't had any issues. There was a batch we know were faulty. We think they're all out of the system now. Thank God. Um, we rarely done anything on seven twenty, so it tends to be super series and also sports series cars. They will go wrong as well on the on the four litre on the seven twenty. We just haven't seen any here because it tends to be like well warranty anyway. I think that's it. Hope that's useful. Sorry it's a bit disjointed. I'll try and get some beer oil covered on that process and we'll try and do some separate videos about specific items. Um, and, but hopefully that is useful for you. Okay? It is not a good crappy engine. It's a brilliant engine, but it does need to be looked after properly. Look after it properly, it'll be problem free. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope that's useful. Talk to you soon. Cheers.